Hello? There it is, Steve. Uh, hope I didn't wake you up. I just came home and was wondering if everything worked out alright. Hi, Steve. Yes, we made the deadline. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I feel so bad you couldn't make it. Hope you guys had a nice Labor Day party. Oh, yes. I mean, the band was great, and Mike fell in the pool. <laughs> oh, and then Roy got really sick. No, wait, Brian. And then he fell in the pool, too. And... No, Roy. Uh, wait. Ah, well, I'll tell you all about it at work tomorrow more. Well, <laughs> afternoon. I, I won't be there for two weeks, remember? Oh, wait, yeah. But, uh, but do you really have to? <laughs> two weeks is a lifetime. Yeah, Steve, I really have to. But I will continue testing for at it. Oh, okay, right, awesome. Um, you know, I better get some sleep now. My plane leaves early in the morning. Okay, Meredith, have a wonderful flight. I, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for picking me up, Mr. Coleman. Mr. Coleman? Please, just call me Frank. We're colleagues now, after all. Well, okay, Frank. Thanks so much for making time for me on Labor Day. No problem, Meredith. Postal workers always have each other's back. Your dad helped me dozens of times whenever I was in a bit of a pickle. Well, I hope I can fill his shoes. He hardly ever missed a day. I'm sure you'll do great. You know what? While we're en route, why don't we deliver some mail in our beautiful little lake town? And show me the ropes? Sure. All right, then. Get ready to roll. This lake is always more beautiful than I remember it. I don't think I'll ever get tired of driving around it. And there's our first stop. Okay, sir, what's the plan? Delivering mail is like a walk in the park with mailboxes. Take this bag, walk to the mailbox, and insert the mail. Nothing too difficult, right? I think I should be able to face the challenge. Ha, <laughs> I bet. Didn't you go to MIT? Yeah. I left here from Massachusetts 22 years ago. Shouldn't you get a job in computers, then? That's really booming right now. Well, actually, I'm, uh... Hold that thought. We just arrived at our next address. It's a package this time, so you'll have to get it out of the back. You're getting the hang of it. So, where were we? Computers. Should I buy one? Uh, well, it depends on what you want to use it for. Bookkeeping. I always make a mess of my tax returns. Can't a computer do that for me? Sure, there are programs for that, but you'll still have to put in some work yourself. I was afraid you were going to say that. I'll bug you about it another time. Our next address is right around the corner. Ah, <sighs> there's no place like home. Sure isn't. Can't wait to get home either. The Mets are playing the Giants. Oh, before I get out, what time do I start tomorrow? 7 a.m. sharp. Just check in at the post office. Okay, Frank. See you tomorrow. Adios. Hi, Meredith. I just wanted to let you know that Dad and I landed safely. <sighs> the Florida weather is all they said it would be. I'll call again soon. Oh, oh, one more thing. The freezer's stuffed with food and there's blueberry pie in the fridge. Bye. Meredith, it's Steve. I didn't get the chance to say it earlier, but thanks so much for being a trooper. I know you had other plans for Labor Day weekend, but nailing the deadline for added 87 could very well be the most important milestone in our company's history. Enjoy your well-deserved time off. Don't get too used to it. Just kidding. Or am I? Uh, I'll talk to you later. Good morning, Meredith. Ready for your first day? Good morning, Frank. Ready to rock. It's a great day to be on the road. I already filled up the mailbag in the truck, 
so you're good to go. Oh, I forgot to tell you. There's a map in the cabin, in case you get lost. Lost? Me? Bon voyage! Can I help you? Hello, here's today's mail. Mm, new in town. Your face looks familiar. Well, I grew up here and then left for college 22 years ago. <sighs> 22 years ago, back when they called me Nancy Sinatra instead of Nancy Reagan. So now you're back, huh? I know what it's like. Actually, this is only temporary. <sighs> That's what I said too, a long time ago. I wonder if it's gonna rain today. It's been raining a lot lately. Oh, look, Genevieve! A new mailman! Hello there! What's your name, then? Hi, Miss... Jenkins, right? I'm Meredith. Meredith Weiss? Weiss, of course! You're Emily's girl, aren't you? This is Meryl Weiss, Genevieve. She used to live in town years and years ago. Twenty-two years, to be exact, but... Who's counting? <laughs> Has it been that long? That's almost oh, two Genevieves ago. <coughs> Calm down, Genevieve. You're going to live forever. She isn't, but shh. You do remember me, don't you? How could I forget Miss Mildred Jenkins? And her cats, of course. Seems like they've multiplied. Yes, I do like cats. Is that such a crime? So what if I have slightly more of them than I used to? Like Genevieve here, and Thomas, and Oliver. Anyway, did you have a package for me then? Yes, ma'am. I think it's a toy bear. I mean, it's shaped like one and feels plushy. Someone must think you need another animal in your life. Hm, bit of a nosy posy, aren't you? I know Frank would never steal up the packages. I apologize. I didn't mean to pry, Miss Jenkins. Hmm. Well, it's probably another gift from my son. Still doing everything to get into my good graces, except actually drop by. I'm sure he means well. He's probably just busy. Hmm. That's what he says. That's probably what you say to poor Emily, too. Anyway, I won't keep you any longer. Run along, dear. Give Emily my best. Goodbye, Miss Jenkins. Genevieve. Hi there. I've got some mail for this address. You're not Frank. Luckily, I don't think a mustache would suit me. Ha <laughs> ha, real funny. But that doesn't explain why Frank gave you the keys for the goose. The goose? Yes, your white and wobbly van, duh. I'm Lori, I'm Providence Oaks mechanic. And I'm the one who keeps the goose running. Well, Thomas is my father. Does that count? Thomas! Yes, that surely counts. My father has been teaching me since the day I was born. There is no one better in P.O. than me. And I have to get back to work now. But I suppose you may drive the goose. On one condition. If there's ever anything wrong with it, you bring it back to me, yes? All right. All right, I promise. Good. Perfect. Uh, did Frank tell you about the radio? No. It currently only receives the local station. Plus, sometimes it cuts out altogether. If that happens, just give it a big old bang on the dashboard and that should fix it right up. I'm working on it, I promise. Okay. Thanks, Lori. No problem, Miss W. There's a new face. A rare sight for a secluded lumberjack? <laughs> yeah. Last time I saw a human being was about six years ago. <laughs> I am here to deliver mail, and I come in peace. I'm Meredith. Thank you. I'm Robert. I hope the peace will be everlasting. Let's see what's inside. Oh, what the... That doesn't sound good. Crap. That's what it sounds like. Bullcrap. Freshly baked bullcrap. Hey, the sound can't be worse than the smell. I'm sorry, but I have to take a better look at this. Have a nice day. Meredith Wise? As I live and breathe. Come here, hon. Uh, now, let me look at you. My, oh my. A few lines here and there. And the occasional gray hair. But by gosh, it's you, all right. Wow, Maureen. Long time no see. I feel so old. 
Oh, don't be like that now. It suits you. Age only makes a person more distinguished, is what I always say. To the mirror. Now come here. Tell me everything. Okay. One quick drink then. I know you're busy, huh? Little Bird told me all about your temporary mail job already. News goes around pretty quickly around here. So, coffee? Something stronger? I warn you, I will not take no for an answer. It's like I'm 17 again, Maureen. In that case, you're welcome, honey. Two coffee, coming right up. And one piece of blueberry pie, if I remember correctly. You had one almost every afternoon after school at one point. You know me too well, Maureen. Always have, always will. Ashley, one blueberry pie. And Ashley, uh, could you keep an eye on the bar for me for a bit? I'm going to take my break now. You're a real trooper. Ashley? Oh, sweet Mary, what are you doing? Uh, is everything okay, hon? Oh, Lord have mercy. Maybe you should check that out. Honestly, first the roof and now this? Ugh. That poor kid is like a disaster magnet. I'm sorry, Meredith. Looks like I've got my hands full for a bit. Next time, I want to hear everything, you hear? Uh, don't be a stranger now. Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's Mom. How are you? How's the job? Hi, Mom. I'm doing great. It's so relaxing to be outside and drive around. Oh, that's great to hear. Dad says it's strange not having to drive the truck anymore. <laughs> I can imagine that. How is Dad? Can he handle all this freedom? Oh, don't get me started. He went on two fishing boat trips already. And then there's the late night poker with his new buddies. Oh, I'm almost out of coins. I'm calling from a bar and Dad's ordering a margarita again. Talk soon. The Countess and the Carpenter? <laughs> really, Mom? Oh, well, let's give it a read. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 1. A more disastrous entry to her new home was scarcely imaginable for Cecilia Schultenbrow. The left wheel of her carriage collapsed right as she entered through the gates of the magnificent Raubenstauben estate. She tumbled upside down, hurt her head, and worse, her hat was ruined. Suddenly, she heard the deep, strong voice of a young man. Are you all right, madam? Welcome to the Flick Shack. How can I help you? Got a package for you, ma'am. Hold on, you're our new postal worker? Talk about not looking the part. <laughs> I could say the same thing about you. You could, but you'd be wrong. I look exactly like I own a video rental place. If you were looking to cast a movie and needed someone to play the owner of a video rental place, you'd attach a picture of me to the call sheet. <laughs> True enough. I'm Meredith, by the way. Meredith Weiss. Angie, Eastman. So, what brings you to Providence Oaks? Um, well, I used to live here. Then I didn't, and now I'm back. Ah, I myself have been here for six years. Must have been in your didn't period. Yep, that would be smack dab in the middle of it. What brings you here? I used to live someplace else, then I moved here. Hmm. Touché, Mrs. Eastman. Miss. So your dream was to rent out videotapes? Not a dream, per se. More like a vision. Figured in a sleepy town like this, people don't have much to do anyways. Might as well watch a flick, right? Mm, you certainly have a lot of them. Choice is everything. Nothing quite tickles the imagination like the right movie at the right time. Hmm, maybe I should watch more movies. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Eastman. Uh, call me Angie. And here, someone just returned this, and it should be right up your alley. The postman always rings twice? Little on the nose, don't you think? 
Well, I don't know anything else about you, Mrs. Temporary Postal Worker. <laughs> Miss. But touche, Angie. All right. I'll check it out if I have the time. Take your time. This isn't exactly the most popular flick in the shack. And there's plenty of choice, regardless. Okay. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Angie. Same here, Miss Meredith. Commander Grace, we have established communication with ground control. How do you wish to proceed? Tell them we landed the rocket! Ground control, we have landed the rocket! We will now begin our experiments! Um, package for the Evans family? Just a minute! Commander Grace, permission to explore? Permission granted! Yep, we're the Evans family. Could I just take that real quick? I'm kind of in the middle of a lunar landing. Sure, here you go. <laughs> nice helmet, by the way. Why, thank you. I actually modeled it on the Apollo 11 crew outfit. Wait, what? Meredith? Buzz Aldrin? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, who are you? What, for real? Y you don't recognize your old best friend when you see her? Wait a minute. Okay. Great. And now I busted my colander. I knew opening the door in this thing was a bad idea. I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you with the colander thing. The helmet. Yeah, clearly. But it seems I'm not the only one who came in disguise. Got me there. You've lived in Providence Oaks all this time? Don't sound so surprised. But yes, I married Barry. Evans, I'm sure you remember our high school star quarterback. Mom! Be right there, Commander Grace! Scanning for alien life forms. That's my little scientist back there. She's crazy about space travel, as you may have guessed, even after the whole Challenger thing. You married Quarterberry? And had kids? I had no idea. Well, obviously a lot can happen in 22 years. So... Time flies. So, I heard you were back in town for a while. From Maureen. That's right. I ran into her yesterday at the diner. The kitchen caught fire, so your Uncle Stan is gonna have a field day. Nope. It's Moe's diner now. Like I said, a lot of things happened while you were away. Also, I work there now. At the diner. Taking over the family business, eh? Let's compare notes. Yeah, we'll see. Ready for a liftoff! Listen, I'm sorry, but I don't really have time for this right now can't get stuck on the moon on my own, and I have to get ready for work. See you around, Em. <laughs> Good to see you, Kay. Evans! <laughs> Commander Grace, hold up! You'll never guess what I just found. You can say that again. Meryl, dear! So glad you could come by. Oh, it's quite the emergency. What's wrong, Miss Jenkins? It's poor little Mortimer. He's fallen ill, I think. One minute he was full of life. The next he, well, he just wasn't. He's almost catato- Sorry. Heard it when I said it. <laughs> Please, Meredith, be a dear and take poor Mortimer to Mr. Mackey. He runs the bait shop by the lake. He'll know what to do. Sure, I'll get right on it. Here, little kitty. Come on. Wonderful. Be nice to Meredith Mortimer. Don't shed too much hair in her van now. Bye, Miss Jenkins. Bye, Meredith. See you soon, Mortimer. Mr. Mackey, I know you're closed, but... What? I'm Meredith Weiss. Yeah, yeah, Meredith Weiss. Thomas Kid. I remember you running around the lake when you were yay high, getting into all sorts of trouble. What can I do you for? Mildred Jenkins tells me you know a lot about animals, and, well... Oh, hi there, little fellow. What's your name? Apparently it's Mortimer. Well, pleased to meet you, Mort. Hmm, he's a little sluggish. Has Millie been feeding him cupcakes again? Cupcakes? I hope not. <sighs> Leave him with me, I'll put him on a diet today. Maybe even catch him a fish if they're biting. With any luck, he should be up and running in the morning. Thank you, sir. By the way, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. You go back to running around that lake, Miss Weiss. Okay. 
Bye, Mr. Mackey. Bye, Mortimer. Hello, sir. Parcel for you. Um, I hope I'm not disturbing, but here's a parcel for you. One minute, I'm busy. Okay, sir. That a parcel for me? Yes, sir. Oregon Trail Motel. You can just put it on the counter. There it is. Hi. Oh, hi, Steve. How are you? Busy as two peas. Added 87 is really getting there. Hey, listen, you've got plenty of time, right? Yeah, there's not much to do around here. Awesome, I need a favor. I sent a bunch of files your way. It's the retail pitch for Added 87. It's good, but not great. It needs your magic. Do you think you can add it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Steve. When will the files arrive, and when do you need the feedback? Ah, oh, well, it should arrive tomorrow, and I need it yesterday. I could just send it to your post office, right? Yep, can't miss. Awesome. Mail back to me as soon as possible. Priority mail. Thanks so much. Oh, I gotta run. Okay, Steve. Oh, one final thing. Now let this marinate. <clears throat> add it, 87. Add anything you like. It's fancy, right? Yeah, don't, don't tell me now. Uh, I got a jet. Bye. <sighs> All right. Let's watch this. Steve's parcel. And a note from Tess. Hey, Em. Hope you're doing well. Steve told me you'd want to read through this monstrosity. Not sure if you really said that, but have a great time there anyways. Take care. Tess. Oh, hello again. More mail for me? And the tape you gave me. Oh, wow. You watched it already? A drifter in a sleepy town, an affair, and a plot to kill a husband? There's a lot more to this movie than I expected. It's a classic, and probably my favorite noir. They did a remake a couple years back, but it's, well, it's not as good. You can't beat Lana Turner's smoldering intensity. Yeah, she's great in it. I'm so glad you liked it. Most of the people here don't really appreciate the art of classic cinema. They just want to see Police Academy again. You're selling them short. Maybe. Just wish I wasn't the only movie buff around. Well... Keep feeding my VCR, and I'll be up to speed in no time. Will do. Let me think about it, and I'll get back to you. You know, it's good to see you. That's nice to hear. Because I have a sneaky little plan. Oh, we're whispering now? I want you to meet me, say, at, at five today. Is that the plan? No, but it's where I'll discuss the plan. You in? All right. I'm in. Hurrah! I'll see you this afternoon. Wait, where are we meeting up? Your place. It's 102 New Street, right? Yes. How did you find that out? Looked up your last name in the Rolodex. Your parents are regular clients. I guess, but... It's settled then. See you at five, partner. Hi there, Mr. Mackey. How's Mortimer? Oh, good day, Meredith. Mort's fine, as I expected. It was just a little indigestion. A good night's rest and a bit of lake trout in the morning has done the little critter a world of good. Excellent. Miss Jenkins will be pleased. Let me take him off your hands. All right. Bye, Mort. Anything else, Miss Weiss? Enjoying yourself so far? I'm having fun, yes. Well, that's good. I'm guessing I'll see you around a lot more, Miss Weiss. For sure, Mr. Mackey. Have a nice day. Look who's back. Mortimer! Oh, look at you! You're good as new! Yeah, Mr. Mackey did say not to feed him cupcakes. Hmm, I suppose he's right. It's, it's just that he likes them so much. Don't you, Mortimer? Anyway, thank you so much, Meredith. My pleasure. See you, Miss Jenkins.
Call me Mildred, dear. Say goodbye to Meredith, Mortimer. There's a face I remember. Good morning, Mr. Harris. Hey there. More paperwork with my name on it? Well, take a look for yourself. Thanks. Oh, it gets worse every day. More bullcrap? Can you believe it? I've been taking care of this lakeside for years. And now they're gonna bulldoze it and build apartments. Sounds like a great place to live, though. That view. If you want a nice view, take a picture. Not when a grumpy man is blocking it. They say you can file an official objection, but I'm not a great match with bureaucracy. I'd rather get the chainsaw and cut down Town Hall. Nothing a chainsaw can't handle. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a nice thought, though. Well, maybe I can help out. I'm better with paper than chainsaws. Would you? Awesome. I'll think about it. Have a great day. Bye, Robert. Hey, wait up. I'm done thinking about it. Maybe you'd want to go through all the files together? Tomorrow afternoon? At Moe's? Food and drinks on me. Mmm, sure. Who can say no to food and drinks at Moe's? Awesome. I'll see you there then. I'll bring all the paperwork. Okay. Bye. Hi, Maureen. Hi, hon. How are you doing this fine day? I'm fine, but how are you? You know, with the kitchen exploding? Oh, that? <laughs> Nothing a fresh lick of paint and a mop couldn't fix. Doesn't mean to scare you. <laughs> Let's pick up where we left off, shall we? And one piece of blueberry pie? Ashley, one blueberry pie. Meredith Wise, back in Providence Oaks. How's life treating you, darling? Well, being back feels a bit strange. I delivered a package to Kay at her house earlier. Yeah, she told me. How did that go for you? It was a bit weird seeing her again. I can imagine it can be a lot to take in for the both of you, especially after being away for so long. Then again, there are some things that never change, right? You being one of them. <laughs> I will take that as a compliment. But I bet the diner looks a bit strange to you, doesn't it? I like what you did with the place. Yeah. I decided it was time for a change. Didn't feel the same after my stand died. World keeps turning. Gotta keep moving along with it, right? Oh my gosh, Maureen. Stan died? I'm so sorry. I, I had no idea. Thank you, darling. But it's really okay. It's been ten years already. Ten and a half, almost. Oh, boy, did I love that man. Oh, we've been married for so long. It hit me like a brick. But after a while, I decided that sadness wasn't the only emotion I was allowed to have. That's not what Stan would have wanted either. Sounds like you went through a lot. Thank you, hon. I do appreciate that. Anyway... You have to get back up. So I did. For me, but also for Kay. <sighs> she took her uncle's death pretty hard. Here's the mail, ma'am. Ugh, one of those yellow parcels. Isn't yellow the color of fun and happiness? It's for that thing behind the door, a photography mini lab. They installed it last week and they want me to operate it. As if I don't have enough on my plate already. That's pretty nice, actually. I love photography. Some people think they can become professional photographers overnight. Well, photography can be just for fun, too, right? Look, if you want to take photographs, knock yourself out. They want me to practice with the mini lab before the service is officially offered. They sent me a practice kit with the camera and film. Really? I'd love to take pictures. The surroundings here are wonderful. Well, here you go, and good luck. Take some pictures and then return it to me. Have a nice day, ma'am. Hey, Miss W. You got some mail for me today? No, but I have something else. Angie from the Flick Shack asked me to deliver some movie boxes. She also asked me to deliver some to you. Oh, tight. What are the options? Let me see. The Love Bug or A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, that last one might be too scary. <laughs> too scary. I'm almost 16, Miss W. I can take a horror movie. If you say so, Lori, I wouldn't want you to get any actual nightmares. I promise I won't get any nightmares. So you'll pick a nightmare on Elm Street? Give me the love book. 
Scary movie too scary after all? No, of course not. But if my parents catch me watching Elm Street, they'll drown me for a week. I wish they'd just take a chill pill and see that I'm basically an adult. I fix cars. Oh, no, that's too bad, Lori. Maybe you can watch it at a friend's house instead. No, I'm homeschooled. There aren't many teenagers here, as you may have noticed. So I don't really have any friends to watch it with. So it's a love bug for me. Tell you what, take the love bug now and we'll watch the horror movie at my place. Would Sunday work for you? What? Really? Yes, it would. That'd be wicked, Miss W. Of course. I'm always in for a good fright. So, see you Sunday? Totally. Thanks so much. Deal. Have a nice day. Hi, Kay. Delivery for the diner. Hey, Meredith. Sure. Just uh, put it on the counter, would you? Kay, about the other day... What about it? How did things end up with the moon landing? Actually, I got stuck on the moon. But then I took a really big jump for the rocket and got back on board just in time. Grace voiced a few objections regarding the scientific accuracy of that move, but hey. As long as it gets you to where you need to be, right? Yep. So, I talked to Maureen. Let me guess. You got a piece of Maureen's wisdom too, eh? Why doesn't that surprise me? That explains why she wanted me to take over today's shift, then. She told me about Uncle Stan. I'm so sorry. Thanks. It was a long time ago, but I appreciate it. It's not the same without him. I'm sorry I wasn't there. For you and Maureen. That's kind of you to say, Meredith. I mean, I didn't contact you about it at the time, but then again, I had kind of given up by then. Even so, it never seems to be the right reason. Time marches on. What did Maureen always say about that again? One day you realize it's, it's marching, marching across, across your across face. Your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mo. Some things never change. Didn't she steal that line from somewhere anyway? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Em. It was good to talk. I mean, you know. Yeah, it was. I have to get back to it, but see you around, maybe? I'm sure. See ya. Hi there. Sorry, pardon? Hi there. Oh, hello. I wasn't expecting a metal detector here. Uh, I, I'm not a metal detector, actually. Oh, of course, you're a detectorist. Very good. If I had a penny for every time someone called me a metal detector, I'd have... Well, I, I'd have a lot of pennies. <laughs> I bet. Have you found anything interesting yet? Yeah, I've, I've found a couple of things. A uh, nail, penny, a soda can, empty soda can. Not the things you're looking for, I presume? I'm not sure what I'm looking for, to be honest, but I guess that's part of the fun. Saves me from disappointment as well. But I guess you wouldn't mind digging up a treasure. Yeah, although maybe that's just what I'm telling myself when secretly I'm hoping for treasure. If you find enough pennies, dimes and nickels, it can add up to a nice amount. Oh yes, metal detecting is a surefire way to become a millionaire. Whoops, did I just reveal the world's best kept secret? <laughs> no worries, it's safe with me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to get back to it now. I need to be our MDC later. Your MDC? A metal detecting club. We compare finds, we discuss the hobby. Sometimes our club president gives a talk on things like buttons. Buttons. I think I'd wait for the one on huge gold nuggets. <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, nice meeting you. It was nice to meet you too. Good luck. Hey, uh. Hello, sir. I reckon that's a parcel with my name on it. I reckon your name is Jack Reynolds? Indeed I am. And I reckon you're the new postal worker? I reckon you could say that. Well, thank you much. New around here, I reckon. People call me JR. I'm a farmer and DJ. A Meredith. Nice to meet you. DJ and farmer? That's a rare combo. Indeed it is. But it's a nice distraction from farming. I've seen better times. I had some spare time and a room in the shed, so I figured, why not? About your playlist. It's really nice. Thanks but I really need to add more songs. But I'm in the middle of a potato harvest. Don't have much time. Hey, listen, postal worker Meredith, I need to get back to work. Can you do me a favor and give this envelope to Frank? Sure, no problem. Thank you so much.
Well now, Meredith and Robert. Welcome to Moe's. Table for two? Hi, Maureen. Yes, please. A quiet one if possible. We've got work to do. Is that what they're calling it now? Speaking of work, Robert, someone reckon they could fix the roof themselves and, uh, <clears throat> made it worse somehow. I mean, foot just went right through. No physical harm, thankfully. The roof! Yes, I promise to take a look at it. Uh, let me check out the damage real quick. Be right back. Thanks, darling. Hmm, sure is one of the good ones right there. He seems very nice, but I haven't actually talked to him longer than ten minutes. What's time got to do with anything? You know what you want when you see it, hon. Oh, Maureen, please. What do you take me for? For a human being, of course. Don't go telling me city life turned you into a robot now. I don't buy it for a second. Anyway, let me show you to my nicest table. I hear the sun hits your face in all the right places here. Okay, so what you're saying is... There's a couple of things we can do, but no chainsaws. Definitely no chainsaws, for the moment. It's just that the remaining options will take time, effort, and patience. Well, that's one out of three for me. Can I get you lovebirds? Anything else? Maureen, really. I could always decide not to fix your roof today, you know. Don't worry, Robert. I know Maureen. I'm sure she doesn't mean anything by it. <laughs> I could go for a glass of red wine, Maureen. Gotcha, hun. Robert? The same for me, please. Sure thing. Back in a jiff. Ashley! Did we get that wine order in last week? They what? Glad we're finally done for today. But there's more to come. I'm sure you'll do fine. Thanks, but you don't sound very convincing. To be honest, you probably need some extra help. Is that an offer? Yeah, sure. Okay, you two hard-working individuals, here you go. Thanks, Maureen. Cheers. So, how's life in P.O. so far? It's only been a week, but so far so good. Yeah, I've been here a bit longer. Time sure does fly. I'm sure you must have some good stories. Yeah, uh, look, Meredith, I'm sorry. I really better get started on fixing that roof. It's just, uh, that's quite a big job. While it's still light out and all. You know. So, thanks so much for your help. I mean, I really do appreciate it. Drive home safe. Uh, I'll see you around town. So, yeah, I'll see you. Everything okay over here? Yeah, I guess. I I'm not sure. Good day. My name is Walter Morgan. I'm from the Postal Service. I'm calling with regards to compliance to policies and guidelines, such as the use of Postal Service property, code of conduct, and so on. I will be in touch again soon. Meredith, it's Steve. Oh, hi, Steve. Thanks so much for improving the text and sending it back to me. I'm confident this will improve our chances of securing a monster deal. You're welcome, Steve. A monster deal? It's a monster deal. The big retailer, big money, big prizes. A monster deal? That is so awesome. Big money, big prizes. Ooh, I need to calm down, too. <laughs> well, yes, calmness is needed. Eyes on the prize. The next steps are me going to meet up with them this week. Discuss terms. I the tiger. Go get him, Steve. Thanks, Meredith. Speak soon. Hmm. Let's see what's on TV tonight. Previously on Bon Appetit. I have good news. Jean Paul has agreed to become the chef of the downtown restaurant. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Rock and roll. There is only one problem. Jean-Paul is not a cook, but a car technician.
Good morning, Meredith. There's an envelope today with an incomplete address on it. It only says Mickey in June, Lake Campground, Providence Oaks. Do you think you can find that? Yeah, I think I know where that is. All right. Have a great day. Thanks. Oh, by the way, Frank, I wanted to ask you something. I will not babysit Mildred's cats. <laughs> no, it's about something else. What's in those envelopes for you? Oh, that's just for stamps. Saves them the hassle of driving up here. Hey, I gotta get back to work. Catch you later. Hello there. Hey, how are you? I may have mail for you. Is it addressed to Mickey or June? Or both? Uh, to both. Here you go. Oh, sweet brother Damien, savior in the hour of darkness. Never mind him. He's a bit stressed out. We were a bit low on paper. Nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Meredith. Nice to meet you, too. Woo! Toilet paper? Probably a bit of cash and some rolling paper. Ah, that kind of paper. No harm in that. Amen, sister. Thanks for the delivery. You're welcome. So, are you guys on vacation? Sort of. Although, I guess you need a job for a vacation. Joan! Can you get in here, please? Now! Oh, that's my cue. It was nice meeting you, sweet Meredith. Can you, like, not tell the authorities your whole life story? Hi, Robert. Here's the mail. Thanks, Meredith. And, uh, sorry for leaving all of a sudden yesterday. Yeah, what was that all about? Well, it was just... I needed some space. I think I've gotten a bit too used to being on my own. Was I such bad company? No, no, not at all. I, I really enjoyed it. I just don't want you to feel weird about it. I was the weirdo. There's nothing wrong with a little weirdness. I just wanted you to know that. Anyways, let's see what's in the mail. A dentist appointment. Wait, why am I sharing that with you? So, no news regarding those apartments? Nothing. Hallelujah. This gives me a bit more peace of mind to work on my wild card plan. Wild card plan? Wild card plan. Yes. Also, highly confidential. Oh, come on. I won't tell a soul. Yeah, but no. Maybe later. It's still work in progress. Okay. Good luck with that. Thanks. Hey, Lori. Did you watch The Love Bug? Hey, Miss W. Yes, I did, and I guess I liked it. You don't have to hide it from me, Lori. You can say you loved it. I guess it wasn't bad. It was really fun, actually. See? Ancient isn't all bad. You still ready for Sunday? I have never been more ready. It's going to be rad. Yeah, totally tubular, right? Uh, sure, Miss W. See you Sunday. Hi, Angie. Oh, hey. So, hey, I dropped off and picked up those movies. Right, right. She seemed positive. I think this might actually work. Hmm, well, it better. It will. I'm sure it will. I'm sorry, it's just that business is slow and... Well, I don't really want to talk about it. Could you just pick up the two new movies and deliver them, please? Hmm, Jaws and The Dirty Dozen. <laughs> Best not to mix these two up. Mm-hmm, great, thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Mr. Mackey, I've got this movie box for you. Leave it on the porch of the cabin, could ya? I need to know if you prefer a war movie or a shark movie. Huh? Movies? Uh, just pick something. I'm sure it'll be fine. All right. Jaws it is. Have a nice day. Hey, Em, it's me, Kay. <laughs> wow, I just, like, instantly dialed your parents' number. Superpowers! <laughs> Probably just muscle memory or something like that, right? Or maybe it's like that thing where you smell something and it instantly triggers this mega old memory you didn't even know you had. Know what I mean? Oh, man, I had that once when Barry bought me lilacs and the smell instantly mentally teleported me to when I was like six years old and fell out of a tree. And I ended up with all this lilac smelling tree gunk all over my face. You remember that, right? What if it's like that with old phone numbers? You go, must dial M, and then your brain just triggers your fingers to dial? Man, 
anyway, I uh, didn't call about that, obviously. I was thinking of maybe taking a stroll around the lake this Sunday, clear my head, and then Maureen suggested maybe you'd like to tag along. Not that I'm asking because of Maureen, of course. Just thought it might be fun to check out the old hangouts and the lake sites and all. If you do want to join, I'll be at the watchtower overlooking the lake at 11 a.m. Sunday. I'll probably hang around a bit, so I'll see you when I see you. Sunday morning watchtower. Be there or be square. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 2. Cecilia hated old Mr. Nabenshoe's table manners. The way he slurped rhubarb into his digestive system was quite the dampener on Cecilia's appetite. She wanted to get out of here and drink and dance with the common folk. Every night, she heard their merry noises travel through her bedroom window. The sounds of real life. Hey, Em! Em! Up here! Hiya! Should I just come up? Come on up! You just have to watch your step on the third leg. Should be good. I have to what? On on the what now? It's fine! Cross my heart and hope to die. Scout's honor. Hope I don't die climbing this tower. Hi there. Good to see you. <laughs> so glad you made it. Isn't it nice up here? sure is. Oh, that view. Gets me every time. <laughs> Sounds like you're starting to remember what's great about P.O. Those times we took some pie up from the diner after school and sat here talking about whatever we felt like. Oh, yeah. How about that afternoon I snuck in some beers from Uncle Stan and they were really disgusting and you puked all over the rail? In fact, wasn't it kind of where you're standing right now? Oh my gosh, it totally was. Ew, ugh. Did you have to bring that up again? I was not counting on getting that much in touch with my younger self. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. I kind of missed having you around. I feel the same way. So, what's life been like for you since you left? Positives? Negatives? You know, I went to university, got a job. On the whole? It's been really good. And the company I work for has a major break coming up, so that's interesting. Oh, that sounds great. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. It certainly is something to think about. I can imagine Providence Oak seems boring by comparison. Well, maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. Ooh, that sounds juicy. Is this about something or someone? That's for me to know and me to find out. Oh, there she goes with the crazy eyes. M still stands for mind your own beeswax, I see. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm backing off. What about you? Did you end up going to college? Yeah, uh, about that. I mean, I wanted to go to art school, yes, but turns out I wasn't good enough or at least that's what they told me when I applied. So I decided to stay and do my own thing. Make music, perform and stuff, you know. I picked up some shifts at the diner, Barry and I reconnected, we got married, and then Max came along. You haven't met him yet, have you? He turns 13 in a few months. Time flies. Anyway, having Max gave things a different rhythm, but I still continued with my music. Even managed to get a bit of a buzz going in Portland. Lined up a few interesting gigs. Tough to balance, but fun. And then? Yeah, just like that, Uncle Stan got sick. Hit him and Aunt Mo like a ton of bricks. 
It was crushing. There I was, just about to get somewhere with my music, but I just couldn't let them down. So I stayed, helped out nursing Uncle Stan, picked up his shifts at the diner. Sounds like you really stepped up. Well, in hindsight, it was a lot. In the moment, though, you don't stop to think. You just do it. Where was Barry in all this? Barry was actually really great. We divided tasks back at the house, and he took care of Uncle Stan when he could. No questions asked. He was just there. And now you still work at the diner? Well, Mo has offered a couple of times to put my name above the door at the diner. Up until now, it felt like too much. Too soon. Too definitive. But I don't know. Maybe if she asks again, I'll think about it. The way things ended up, it may not have been part of my master plan. But I got to spend some of the most precious moments of my life with the most precious people I know. Got to say goodbye to Uncle Stan and be there for Mo. They basically raised me. I'm grateful I got to do that for them. And I built a family of my own, right here in good old P.O. And one day, those kids will hurl all over this rail, just like we did. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's been tough, but looking back, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. Oh, that's so great, Kay. I'm glad at least one of us grew up to be a well-rounded individual. Is there a manual I can borrow? Well, after you left, I had to raise myself, didn't I? <sighs> so, ready to descend to the world below? Yeah, seems like it's time. Come on, then. Hello? You are speaking to Monster Deal Central. How may I help you? Hey, Steve. You're in a good mood? Meriden, please tell me to calm down. We are so close to a deal. Add it 87 in shops all across America. M -m 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 monster Deal. Oh, wow. That is so awesome. Tell me more. Okay, okay. I met up with this big retailer, right? They read our great pitch. They loved it, and they want to buy 250,000 copies of Added 87. 250,000. Multiply that by, like, 35 bucks. What? That's millions of dollars of revenue! m, -m, -m, -m millions and, and it's just the start. Listen, I've got the contract right here. I'm sending over a copy. You should have it tomorrow. Please, please, check, check, double check, check it right away. I want your blessings before I sign on the dotted line, okay? Gotcha, Steve. Don't worry about it. Awesome. I'll be in touch again Tuesday evening. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. It's official. I love horror movies. A Nightmare on Elm Street is radical. It was amazing! Thank you for watching with me, Miss W. You're welcome. I'm never going to sleep again. Ha! Huh, maybe you shouldn't have watched the movie. Man, I wish my parents would let me watch these movies. I can't wait until I move out. Move out? Aren't you 15 years old or something? Almost 16, and yeah. Don't get me wrong, I love tinkering and I love working in my father's shop, but... It's just so boring sometimes. I want to see more of the world. I want to meet more people. I'm sure you've noticed, but there's not many teenagers here in Providence Oaks. And I'm homeschooled, so I don't have many friends to hang out with either. But what do you want to do after school then? I don't know. My parents want me to work in Dad's shop, but I don't think I want that. And you left when you were younger, so I figured maybe you had some advice for me? Oh. Well, maybe. I think... Working at your father's shop could be a great opportunity, too. Grow the business, expand to other towns, set up a whole chain of shops. I suppose, but I don't think that's really what I want to do, though. But maybe other villages aren't so boring? Plus, the lake is pretty sweet. And I would miss my parents if I left. And this way, I could stay with them, even after school. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe working in Dad's shop isn't so bad. See? P.O. is as fun as the people living in it, and it could really use a girl like you. Ah, thank you, Meredith. Also, for talking to me and stuff. 
You're very welcome, Lori. I had a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> Me too. I should get home soon. Later, Meredith. Later! Oh, Steve's parcel. And another note from Tess. Hey, Em, here are Steve's contracts. I bet you're in the mood for some light reading. And now without sarcasm, really. I must admit the energy here is contagious. Is Adit actually going to take off? See you soon. Tess. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Uh, good morning, sir. I didn't see you there. The name's Walter Morgan. I'm with the Postal Service. I left you a message on your answering machine earlier this week. Ah, yes, I remember. Miss Weiss, if you could follow me into the office. I would like to ask you a few questions. Are you familiar with the Postal Service policies? Um, yes, well, the gist of it. Can you remember the segment from Chapter 11, Section 3, First Paragraph? Ah, yes, Chapter 11. Riveting stuff. It says in Chapter 11, Section 3, First Paragraph, and I'll paraphrase, it is forbidden to use Postal Service property for personal gain. Yes, very bad. Not good. Not good at all. Miss Weiss, I'm aware that you've only just begun working here, but I trust that you do not take the responsibilities of a postal worker lightly. No, of course. I mean, uh, yes, sir. The Postal Service puts its employees under the highest level of scrutiny. I advise you to answer the following three questions truthfully. A yes or no will suffice. Do you know Frank Coleman? Yes. Have you ever given him envelopes or received envelopes from him that weren't postmarked? Yes. Are you aware that Frank Coleman wages bets on baseball games? Yes. That will be all. Thank you for your cooperation. What's going to happen to Frank? I'm sorry. We can't discuss personnel matters. Good luck with the mail today, Miss Weiss. Hello? Sir? It's the mail. Excuse me? What's this all about? Oh, I thought I'd not bother you and just deliver the parcel. I'd appreciate it if parcels are not just dumped on the counter. Okay. I'll take that into account for next time. You'd understand if you had any idea about what I'm trying to do here. Setting up a computer system to handle all the bookings is quite sophisticated. Oh, interesting. I work in computers too. Delivering computers does not mean that you work in computers. Yep. Just like playing games also doesn't count as working in computers. Don't you have more computers to deliver? Hi, sweet Meredith. Hi there. Here's the mail. Thanks. On your own today? Sorta. Mickey's in the RV. He hardly slept last night. Said he had hallucinations of rotten fish in the RV. Did he have too much of the stuff that makes you feel funny? Well, actually, when I went outside this morning, there was this huge rotting lake trout right below our window. Totally grossed me out. How does something like that end up there? Ew, disgusting. I may have... Uh, hold on. Mickey's got to read this. Mickey! Wake up, honey! Leave me alone. I'm still shit-faced. It's a letter from Damien. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. Give me that. Looks like we won't be here much longer. Oh, really? Where are you going? We're going to Canada. We will be picked up this Thursday, early in the morning. Canada? For good? Joan? Are you running your mouth again? I'm sorry, sweet Meredith. Gotta go. Hey, you know what? You should come by Wednesday. Our last night here. We'll build a campfire, have a drink, maybe a puff or two. You know. And talk about the meaning of life, of course. The complete outdoors experience. Gee, I don't know, June. June? Oh, please, sweet Meredith. I gotta run now. Be here Wednesday after sundown. Hi there, Meredith. I suppose you've come to pick up that VCR thing you dropped off earlier. The movie box? Yes. Did you watch it? Yeah, I did, I did. 
Took some figuring out how to hook it up to my old TV set, but I got it to work. Good watch. Shark looked a bit fake, though. I saw it in the theater at the time. Pretty exciting. So anyway, Angie over at the Flick Shack hopes this entices you to visit. Yeah, I thought so. Maybe I'll drop in one day. Well, you gotta get it back to work. Hey, here's the package. Thanks. See you around. Hey, here's your movie box back. Oh, thanks so much, babe. Listen, I owe you an apology. Apology? For what? I was Kurt. Just plain Kurt. And here you are delivering movies for me. You deserve better. It's okay. No one can be perked up all the time. So, any idea what caused it? Business is slow. More than slow. I mean... The Flick Shack is in real trouble. That movie box kind of was my last-ditch marketing effort. Nothing's worked so far. That's awful. What'll you do if the store goes bust? I mean, I don't know. Without the store, there's really not much here for me in P.O. So you just up and leave? I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, enough whining. Let me make up for my stupid behavior and reward you for your diligent movie fairying, my lady. Reward me? Yep. I've got... Ta-da! Coupons! They're one of the few perks this job has. I get to take myself and a plus one to a free movie of my choice at the new cinema in Astoria. Valid tonight only. Wow, pretty cool perk. It is, isn't it? So what'll it be, Missy? You in or you out? <laughs> I'd love to. I'm in. Great. Pick you up at your place at eight. I know where you live. <laughs> anyway, gotta get back to it. Bye. Bye. Hello? Hey, Meredith. How was your day at the office? Uh, I mean, mail truck. Oh, hey, Dad. Actually, it did start at the office. I was being interrogated. Interrogated? What? By whom? Walter Morgan, a higher up from the Post Service. He started asking questions about code of conduct and about Frank. Uh, Morgan, that walking corpse. He's always after Frank. What did you say? Nothing, basically. That's my girl. They'll never catch Frank anyways. He's always one step ahead of them. Listen, Mom's poking me. I guess we're not allowed to talk about work. Uh, here she comes. Bye, Meredith. Hi, Meredith. Was Dad trying to get work stories out of you? Hi, Mom. Yep, he tried. And he succeeded. It was a weird day. Well, I'm changing the subject right now. Have you met the new guy at the hotel yet, Matt? Yeah, I met him the other day. He's, uh, a unique character. Unique? <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it. He's one of the reasons why I won't miss working at the hotel. Anyway, how's life in good old P.O.? It's nice. I met some interesting people. That's good to hear. Interesting people. Do you mean interesting, interesting, or just interesting? I mean just interesting. What do you mean? You know what I mean. It's been a while since you've met someone interesting. That's right. And now I'm changing the subject. How are you guys doing over there? Oh, Florida is fantastic. I think I might actually want to live here. The warmth of the sun, it's very easy to get used to. Oh, Dad is telling me to get back. Looks like the bar's open. Wonder what he's ordering this time. I'll get an Alabama Slammer. <laughs> Alabama what? Alabama Slammers, cheers! This is fun. It's been ages since I've been to the movies. Well, they call it the movies, plural. But of course, we can only see one movie at a time. So, which one will it be? You pick. You're the expert. That's exactly why I want you to choose. The choice of innocent eyes. All right. Let's see. Big Trouble in Little China, Blue Velvet, or The Great Mouse Detective. All right, I'm ready to pick. Big trouble in Little China. Ooh, the carpenter. This ought to be a ride. <laughs> Hi. 
and it's endlessly quotable. Yes, sir. The check is in the mail. <laughs> you were right about it being a ride. Woo! Yep, that's Carpenter. And the best part is, we don't have to talk about hidden meanings or anything. Oh, dear. Does that mean we have to talk about ourselves? Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, my parents' house is right down this road, as you well know. Right, Missy. Let's go that away. <sighs> I wish I loved anything half as much as you love movies. Next time, we'll do something in your area of expertise. What, computer software? Yeah, we can build a killer robot or something. I like the sound of next time, by the way. <laughs> Oops, what a slip of the tongue. So, here we are. Now what? Well, we could have a cup of tea at my place. I would like that. I wonder what old Jack Burton would say at a time like this. Meredith, can I bug you for a second? Sure, Frank. What's up? That Walter Morgan guy. Uh, what did he want from you? He was asking all sorts of questions. Also about you, Frank. God damn it. Can you believe that jerk? Are you in trouble, Frank? Trouble? <laughs> They're the ones who are in trouble. I gotta get back to it, Meredith. Have a great day. Oh, before I forget, that Robert Harris guy was here this morning, looking for you. He asked if you could drop by. He's working somewhere in the forest today. Oh, hey you. Hi. So I'm guessing you want to rent a movie, huh? <laughs> We've got a great selection. Actually, that's not what I'm here for at all. Wait, you're not telling me you're here for little old me. <laughs> so, what's on your mind, babe? I think I'm starting to like you. A lot. And I'd like to ask you to be a little less awesome. It's distracting me. <laughs> no can do, Miss Weiss. Being awesome is my thing. Would you ask Rocky to stop boxing? <laughs> Touché. So anyway, what's on your mind? Seems I caught you in a rare moment of quiet contemplation. <sighs> yeah, uh, I just... You ever get the feeling you're not where you need to be? Yeah, I know that feeling. I know it all too well. It's just that this whole Flick Shack adventure... I think it was the right idea at the wrong time. And in the wrong place? I think so. Yeah, I think I'm just too different for this town. Plus, business hasn't really been booming. Ah, uh, and here I was hoping our movie box project would turn things around. <laughs> it almost did. Don't think that it didn't help. That's what I mean with the wrong time. I'm sure video will be huge. But it isn't. Not yet. Not here, anyway. So you're leaving? Yeah. Yes, I am. Wow. I, I didn't realize until just now that I'd already made my mind up. But I guess I have. I'm leaving. Gosh, it feels so liberating to say. <sighs> you're welcome. How about you? Have you made your mind up yet? Uh, about your future, I mean? Me? No, not yet. Well, take your time. I want to give it my full attention when you do decide. And right now, I really have to start organizing the grand closing of the Flick Shack. We hardly knew ye. I hear ya. I'll swing by later. Hi Kay, package for you. I thought I might as well give it to you now instead of, you know, waiting till you're home. Oh, thanks. That's super amazing. Thank you. Um, what is it? Oh my god. I'm so excited about this! Yay! I see. This is a guessing game. All right. Is it a, a bunch of copies of the E.T. game? Ugh, I hope not. Okay. You don't have to tell me. I mean, if it's illegal. Okay, you ready? It's actually a Yamaha DX7 synthesizer! Oh man, I 
I'm super stoked this arrived so soon. I got this amazing deal on it through the classifieds. This old guy was selling it. Apparently he had never really used it. I mean, what? How? Can you imagine owning something like this and not using it every moment you get? I mean, this synth is used everywhere these days. So I was like, yes, this is mine. <laughs> Sorry, I can get carried away about this kind of stuff. I know, you're doing that speeding up thing again. To be honest, you lost me around the time you opened the box. But if it works like a computer, sign me up. Computers, eh? Oh, wait, are you a programmer? Because if you are, you should totally check out the Insonic Mirage. If you like sampling machines, you should totally try out programming. Oh, man, I would love to. So much to do, so little time. Listen, Em, I totally owe you for lugging this around for me. Now, what will you have? It's on the house. Pie. I mean, I'd love some blueberry pie if you have it. Oh, I just sold the last slice. We're clean out. Anything else? I owe you? I owe you it is. Apparently, I have some baking to get started on now. But good to see you. And thanks again. No problem. Have fun with your synthesizer. Yes, thanks. Hey, Meredith. I'm up here. Hey, Robert. Wow, that's really high. What? I can't hear you. Should I come up as well? Sorry, I can't hear you. Maybe I should come down first. Can you hear me now? Hi, Meredith. Loud and clear. Over. Thanks for coming out here. This arborist job came up suddenly. Awesome. I'd love to try that sometime. It's great up there. I used to climb a lot. Still do, actually. But now I get paid for it, too. Anyways, I figure it would also be good for you to see where the apartments are planned. Oh, okay. So, what now? Well, I want you to listen to my wild card plan. Tell me all about it. I've scheduled a recording session at a professional sound studio. Get out of here! Are we gonna do a tree version of We Are The World? Yes! I can do Bruce. We are the world. We are the children. That sounds great. I'll be Cindy Lauper. Well, 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 let us realize all that a change can only come. Oh, yes. But no. Sorry. It'll be a radio message to get the people of Providence Oaks involved. Ah, you're such a party pooper. Yep. I also work undercover for the fun police. It'll be this afternoon, by the way, at Jack Reynolds' barn. Are you in? I could use an extra set of ears. A professional sound studio, huh? Okay, I'm in. Great. Meet me there after work. I'm gonna get back up in this tree now. See you later. Bye. Be careful up there. Thanks. We are the ones to make a brighter day. So let's start giving. Okay, folks. It's showtime. Robert, are you ready? Yes, but before we start, I'm not a pro, so please bear with me. You'll do great. Okay, Robert, take it away. <clears throat> Fellow Providence Oakians, I'm Robert Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Perfect. That's a wrap, folks. Back to work. Hold on, hold on, Jack. Meredith, what do you think? The text is fine, but I miss a revolutionary vibe. It needs more passion. Um, uh, okay, you might be right. Jack, one more recording, please. Sure, Robert. Here we go in one, two, three, action. Fellow Providence Oakians, I'm Robert Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Better? Yeah, that should do it. Okay, that's a wrap. Back to tater harvesting. Meredith, I'm gonna return the favor and help Jack out today. If you love birds wanting to spend more time together, she can come along too. Plenty of work to do. Jack, what the? Nothing wrong with a bit of hard work outdoors. Let's go. Rock on, let's do this. Okay, folks, hop on my tractor. It's time for the real show. It's me. Oh, 
Hi, Steve. I'm sorry. Didn't get the chance to look at the contracts yet. Oh, you didn't? I'll look at them tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, short call. Got a rush. Corporate lawyer appointment. Crossing the T's and dotting the I's. You speak soon. All right. Here we go again. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Good morning, Mr. Morning. I need to inform you that your colleague Frank Coleman has been suspended. Frank? Suspended? Why? The only thing you need to know right now is that I will be filling his spot for the time being. Okay, so do the envelopes go to you now? Miss Weiss, if that was not a poorly timed attempt at comedy, the best I can do is pretend you never sent this. All right. I'm just going to walk away and pretend Frank's going to be okay. Have a good day, sir. Just to be safe. Ah, there's the mail. How's the photography coming along? My photography quest has been completed. Here's your equipment back. Okay, then. Let me see if I can manage to develop them. Come back tomorrow for the results. Thank you. See you tomorrow. What's this? The Flick Shack has closed down and will not reopen. Any unreturned tapes can be dropped off before September 22nd. It has been a privilege to serve as Providence Oak's premier home cinema provider. Thank you for your patronage. All the best. Your Flick Shack proprietor, Angie. Hmm. Hi, Maureen. P.O. people, I need to pause the music for a special message. Uh, ash, darling, I want to hear this. And so do you. It's from our own Robert Harris wants to keep Providence Oaks pretty. Uh, don't flatter yourself, he's talking about the trees. Take it away, Robert. Dear people of Providence Oaks, I'm Robert Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Isn't that something? It could have been more juicy, I guess. But it does say exactly what he wants it to, which is rare for our Robert. Even though he does have his redeeming qualities, doesn't he just? I wonder how he came up with the idea, though. Actually, I helped out a bit when he was recording it at Jack's studio. Is that right? Now, Maureen, don't Maureen this out of proportion. I see. Robert wasn't kidding when he said uh, he wants to keep pretty things around in Providence Oaks now, was he? You think so? Well, that's what I heard. Anyway, I actually wanted to talk to you about something else. What are you doing this Sunday evening, hon? Something tells me I'm about to find out. You know it. Listen here. I'm hosting a very special first time Open mic night this upcoming Sunday. We'll have some drinks, some food, discover the town's hidden talent, or not. If you know what I mean, it'll be a hoot. More like a hoot and a half. Count me in. Good. I already had you down on my list, of course, but it's nice of you to RSVP. That's settled then. I will see you this Sunday at 8 p.m. And tell everyone you meet, okay? Let me see you put those postal delivery muscles to good use. Why do I have the feeling I don't have a choice here? There you go. You're catching up. Now I have to go unpack some deliveries out back, but I will see you soon, darling. And don't forget about the open mic. I couldn't if I wanted to. Mail carrier Meredith. Farmer Jack. Good to see at least someone's working today. As opposed to Frank? As opposed to me. Can't harvest taters with all this rain. But Frank's not twiddling his thumbs, I can tell you that. You spoke to him? Yeah, just talked to him on the phone. He's mad as a wet hen. It's quite entertaining, actually. Thanks for dropping by, mail carrier Meredith. I gotta get back to it. Isn't it well past harvesting season? True enough, but uh, something else is keeping me occupied. And what's that? Can't say, mail carrier Meredith. Can't say. Have a good one. Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's me. Oh, hi, Dad. What's up? The sun is up. The sky is blue. Life's good here. <laughs> nice. Wish I could say the same. I hope you mean about the weather. Well, it did rain a lot here today. Oh, just wait until the wet season really starts. 
and never ends. Why haven't you told her yet? Let me talk to her. Well, excuse me, Mrs. Weiss. Meredith, sorry to break it up. Your mom wants to talk to you. Meredith, I'm so excited. Your dad and I found this cottage this weekend near the beach. It's so pretty. Not too big, but who wants to be inside anyway? Uh, me? I like to be inside. I know, honey, but hear me out. We talk to the owner. We can rent it for the time being, spend the winter here. And if we like it, we can buy it and settle down here for good. Wow, that's quite a big step. Life-changing and all that. Isn't it something? And uh, it means that our house will be vacant for a while. We won't put it on the market until we've tried out Florida for a few months. So, um, if you want to extend your stay in Providence Oaks... Are you serious? I'm pretty serious, yes. But uh, it's a pretty big deal, so just think about it for now. Hmm? Can I talk to her for a sec again? Yeah, here comes your dad again. Bye, dear. I'm going to get us something bubbly. Hey, Meredith. Just wanted to say that I'll call again at the end of this week. Have a great one. Okay. Bye, Dad. Memories, memories, memories Of you <laughs> that was so deep. Right, Meredith? Wow, yeah. Awesome. It's in the darkness when my soul stars align and, and illuminate the real me. Oh, baby, I'm so happy for you. We, we need to celebrate this moment. I I'll be right back, ladies. Mickey can be difficult sometimes, but nights like these, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but with him. And that's why you're following him all the way to Canada? It's also that he needs me. He would get into trouble without me. Is she interrogating you again, June? Oh, Mickey. Be nice to sweet Meredith. <laughs> I'm just kidding now. Uh, sorry for being a hard-ass the other day, Meredith. It's just that we need to be a bit cautious. It's okay, Mickey. I've had worse, delivering mail. Delivering mail for the man? I couldn't do that. The man? What man? The man, you know, in general. Anything with authority, in whatever shape or form it appears. I think I know what you mean. Feeling like a prisoner of society. Hey, guys. Let's not spoil this evening with heavy stuff, okay? Ah, you're so right, Junebug. Who cares about the man when I've got you? There's something that'll make you feel lighter. Much lighter. <coughs> Meredith! No thanks. I'll pass. June? Maybe later, Mickey. Meredith, how about some booze instead? No thanks, June. I'm good. Aww. I guess I'll drink some wine by myself then. Be right back. Memories. 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 Are you guys on the run? What can I say? We've got a few unpaid parking tickets. Mickey had an argument with some cop, and then there's a bit of college and tax debt. Nothing major. So we're not really on the run. It's more like speed walking. I'm sure you'll have more peace in Canada. I hope you guys will be happy there. It's so exciting. Damien will pick us up with his Jeep tomorrow morning. We'll have a cozy hour under the blanket, swim across the border, and then we're good. Hey, I just realized we're abandoning the RV. You should totally have it. Mickey, can Meredith have the RV? What piece of junk? <laughs> Knock yourself out. Really, guys? 
That's awesome. No problem. We don't really believe in possessions anyway. Whatever you decide, we'll leave it at the gas station. That's where we rendezvous with Damien. Wild. Memories, memories, memories of you and me. Memories. Oh dear, you're a sight for sore eyes. Oh, hi, Miss J... Mildred? How so? Are you expecting more mail from your son? It's just... this week. It's all a bit much for me. I need to get my hair done for Sunday's special evening. But I can't leave my cats alone. And then all of a sudden, Frank has gone missing. He still needs to bring me an envelope. Please tell me that you have it with you. I'm afraid this is just a postcard. But what do you mean he needs to bring you an envelope? Oh, don't be a nosy posy, Meredith. Oh dear, oh dear. He can't just have vanished into thin air, can he? I wish I could tell you where he is. Oh, Frankie boy. Always making me worry too much. And I need to cancel the hairdresser's appointment. But what if I can't reschedule? Perhaps I could look after your cats. Would you, my dear? It's tomorrow evening. That would be such a relief for me. And the cats. Tomorrow night? Sure, no trouble at all. Oh, thank you so much, dear. Just show up at seven and eat as many cookies as you like. Meredith! Look at this house on wheels. I have no idea where it came from, but it's absolutely rad. It's mine, actually. Mickey and June gave it to me. You know, that young couple down by the lake campground. Whoa, really? That's so tight! Here, they left this note on the driver's seat. Oh, let me read it. Life's a journey and not a destination. Just grab the wheel and enjoy the ride. Love, M and J. So, what are you going to do with it? You have to hit the road. I don't know what I want yet. I was hoping it could stay here for a while. You can tinker on it, too. You know I'd love tinkering, but it's going to need a lot of work. It can stay here for as long as you need. Good to hear, Lori. I can already hear the cogs in your head spinning at top speed. What are your plans? Well, if it's going to be here a while, I should give it a name first. Can't have such a beautiful vehicle and not give it a name. How about... The sea turtle. Big, slow, washed up, just like a turtle. Or the raccoon, because it's got brown spots and is full of trash. Or the hermit shell. It had many owners over the years, just like the shell of a hermit crab. I like the sea turtle. Good choice. I'll get working on it right away. See you later. Bye. Ah, yes, yes, yes. He could only look on in sheer terror as Madeline threw the key straight into the lake. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is good stuff. Important delivery. Oh, for Christ's sakes, go away. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. You haven't told me anything. I'm, I'm new here. Oh, bloody heck. Do I sound like I care? You lot are all the same to me. Just go away. How many yokels are there in this backwater town? Do they realize people come out to these kinds of places because they're supposed to be remote and quiet? Do you know the Postal Service motto? Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night, so on and so forth. But no one ever added neither rudeness, nor arrogance, nor insults, last I checked. <sighs> I... I do beg your pardon. I... yes, I am expecting a package. I didn't know you were from the Postal Service, man. You didn't know anything about me before you started shouting. And yet, you did it anyway. All right, all right, I'm sorry. It's just... I've been under a lot of pressure lately from my publisher, as well as my wife. I do appreciate your driving all the way up here. And Lord knows I'll be needing those ribbons. Just please leave them on the porch and... Thank you. 
You're welcome, sir. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Now, where was I? She threw the key in the lake. Then what happens? Oh, Christ's sake, she made me lose my bloody train of thought. No, wait, I got it. And then he says... Good afternoon, Miss Weiss. Yikes, you creep! Uh, you keep giving me jump scares. What? I mean, excuse me, sir. Slip of the tongue. Good afternoon. I wanted to let you know that today was my last day here. Oh, really? Will Frank be coming back then? That's all I have to say. Good luck. Hello? Hi, Em. It's me, Kay. Oh, hi, Kay. Good. You're home. Listen, I don't know if you're busy tonight, and I wouldn't normally bother you like this, but I'm kind of in a huge pickle at the moment, and now I'm imagining being inside of a huge pickle. Thanks, brain. <laughs> sure, what's up? Okay, so this is going to sound like I'm 16, but I have these tickets to a really big concert tonight for Barry and me, and it seems the babysitter has just bailed on me. All right, so maybe the babysitter part doesn't sound like I'm 16, I hope. <laughs> anyway, it's Journey, so I'm like, oh, I need to go tonight, and I got these tickets ages ago. And it's a long drive to Portland, so we'll probably be out all night, and I promise you I've called everyone and their brother besides. They're really good kids to watch tonight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kay! Inside voice, Kay. Inside voice. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You're totally right. I'm blabbering on R and I. Okay, don't freak out. You got this. All right, recap. Journey tonight in Portland. Got tickets. Sitter bailed. So I guess you figured out by now that I'm awkwardly trying to ask if maybe you could do me a huge favor and watch Grace and Max tonight? Watch your kids? Yeah. Sorry to spring this on you like this, by the way. I tried to find you earlier, but you and your van are kind of hard to locate during the day. Listen, if you can't make it, don't feel bad. I mean, maybe I can try to get tickets for another time, you know? I'm sure there will be future tour dates in the area and stuff, and if not, I'm sure some other cool concert will come along soon. So I completely understand if you're tired or if you've got other stuff tonight. Kay, hey, it's fine. I'll babysit tonight. Oh my god, you serious? That would help me out in such a big way! And I would owe you big time. Huge! You would, wouldn't you? Hmm, interesting. Oh dear, never mind. Don't care. Can you be here around 6 p.m., so in like 30 minutes? You don't have to bring anything. There's food, videos, even a cardboard replica of Apollo 11 with a set of matching helmets. You're covered. See you in a bit. All right, see ya. All right, who wants s'mores? Hey, 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 guess who's back? Frank? I'm so glad to see you again. I'm so happy to be here again. I guess Morgan didn't stick around to welcome me back. Good riddance. Hell yeah, that clueless piece of work. Tell me more. How'd you get rid of him? Well, what can I say? Don't mess with the big boys. I guess they didn't understand that some of my customers do a little more than talking about their cats. Ooh, this sounds very juicy. Frank Coleman's no stranger to the high-stakes game. I've got lawyers in my inner circle. All it took were a couple of lawsuit threats. Sweet. That should keep them off our backs for a while. Haha, <laughs> yes. But that buffoon will be back. You can bet on it. Let's dial down the betting for a while, Frank. Haha, <laughs> Meredith. I better get back to work. Driving along the highway Hello? Friday Delivery Day. Well, just call me Friday Delivery K. Okay, no, that sounded better in my head. Someone's in a good mood today. Yes, thanks for looking after Max and Gracie last night. You were a real trooper for stepping in last minute. No problem, they were great. I appreciate the lie. <laughs> so, how was the concert? Oh, yeah. Man, Journey is so good. Those songs have been stuck in my head all day. Yeah, but Journey? I know, right? There's just so much cool stuff being created right now, you know? I mean, Journey was cool. I got to know them through Barry at first, but I tell you, if Prince or New Order ever came to Portland, I would sell my spleen for tickets. Still into music, huh? Oh, and I haven't even mentioned Cyndi Lauper or Run DMC 
or Stevie Wonder. And before you go there, I know you're probably setting up a joke about spleens and ham and organs right now. Joke's on you because I don't even know what that means. You know, music organ, body organ. Never mind. All jokes aside, though, I spent half the concert thinking about how I haven't really focused on my own music for a while now. Kids, work, all that stuff. So much going on. And I mean, I love tinkering, but right now, I'm not sure I'm even creating anything cool or just... You know? Not even Barry is allowed to listen to my songs at this stage, to be honest. I'd love to hear your music sometime. I'm sure it's great. Thanks for the vote of confidence! Maybe I'll hold you to that. I was thinking, I have a mixtape with some of my stuff, you know? Just something I've been trying out with my new synthesizer. I'd be honored. That's great! It's just something I've been playing around with. Don't expect any fireworks. And hey, don't tell me what you think yet, yeah? You'll be my secret special audience of one. So I can get used to the idea of an audience. Any special reason? Okay, don't tell anyone. But I'm thinking of performing a song on my new synth this Sunday. Holy crap, I just said that out loud. Dude! You are coming to the open mic, right? Of course, that's great! Wild horses couldn't drag me away. But act cool, yeah? No one else knows yet. See you there. Sure thing. Back to my own journey for now. Haha. <laughs> nope, ignoring that. Bye now. Meredith. Hey, Robert. How are you? I was away for a few days on an urgent job out of state. I'm good. It's nice to see you again. Here's the mail. Thanks, and likewise. Hmm, priority mail from Town Hall. Let's see what they have to say this time. Dear Mr. Harris, on behalf of yada yada yada, concerning Environmental Management Act 1213, yada yada yada, uh, wait, what? <laughs> Listen to this. We have decided to postpone the construction of apartments for at least six months. We hope this satisfies you as well as the many residents of Providence Oaks that contacted us with their unfiltered and enthusiastic comments. It worked. The plan worked. Wow, great! So happy for you, Robert. We need to celebrate this. Uh, how about tomorrow night? Steak dinner at Moe's. Or something else. On me. Ah, oh, I'd love that. Great. It's gonna be fun. See you tomorrow night, then. Gotta go now. The telephone troops need to know the assault can be abandoned. Ah, the waxworms have arrived. Excuse me? I meant the package, Miss Weiss. It's my worms. For fishing. They're just in time. I'm taking a boat to the island this afternoon. Oh, nice. A boat trip. Hey, you can tag along if you want, like your father used to. But I'm not helping you with any wax worms. Oh, really? Sounds like fun. Okay, we'll show up here at 4 p.m. sharp. So... Is this a quiet day, or does it always take this long? Fishing requires patience. We've only been here for two hours. I'm afraid patience is not my strong suit. Yeah, there's a fine line between boredom and relaxation. I find it hard to relax sometimes. Fishing also requires silence. Bert, can I ask you a question? <sighs> about life. Life, huh? I'll tell you about it. When I was young, I joined the Navy. Saw more in one year than anyone should have to see in an entire lifetime. <sighs> we ought to be heading back home. It's been a fine day, and I thank you for the company. Hmm. Kay's tape. Let's have a listen. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Driving along the highway, 
headlights light up the signs Thinking of what might have been Radio keeps track of time Hello? Hi, Meredith. Guess what I signed today? Hmm, let me think. The ma ma monster deal? Oh, yes. You are now talking to Steve Mitchell, CEO of a multi-million dollar enterprise. But before I continue my insufferable bragging, I have a thing or two to say to you, about you. You've been a huge part of the success of this company, and I feel this is just the beginning. We're entering the golden age of personal computers, and we've got front row tickets. The past two weeks have made me realize that I couldn't have done it without you, and I'm going to need you even more in the coming years. So, here's a new monster deal I want you to think about. Become a partner in the company for 20% of the shares and a significant pay raise. Significant. The only condition is that I need your commitment for the next five years. So, there it is. Think about it, and let's talk about it more when you're back in the office. This is a bit of a surprise. Just let it sink in a bit. I don't need an answer right now. I have to get back to my uh, million-dollar lifestyle. Actually, no, I, I need to get cranking on lots of stuff. Talk soon, Meredith. Good evening, feline friends. Aunt Meredith's gonna keep you company tonight. Come here! Kee kee kee! Ow! A postcard? From Angie? Miss Meredith, I am so, so sorry I haven't been able to see you. It's just that I've been swamped organizing my not-so-timely exit from Providence Oaks. I'm sure you understand. You've probably seen the foreclosure notice. That certainly helped expedite my decision to leave. Anyway, I'll be honest. I'm still thinking about that kiss we shared in the car. And I don't usually dwell on these kind of things. So, feel special, Meredith. I hear you're going to the open mic night on Sunday. I wasn't planning on going, but I want to see you before I leave. I'm really anxious to find out what you've decided to do. Whether you're going to stay in this town, or go back to the city, or do something else entirely. And I'm going to be forward, as you know I always am. I'd like to know if little old me figures into those plans, somehow. So, anyway, I'll see you there, yeah? Love, Angie. I managed to get the machine to work. Here are the pictures. Thank you. I'm happy with how they turned out. If you'd have picked them up earlier this week, you could have participated in a photography contest. Well, I don't think I would have won anyway. You can probably only win contests like those if you're professional. I'd like to think that talented casual photographers also have a decent chance. Well, one can always dream. Okay, fellow Providence Oakians, it's time once again for the sent-in letters and announcements. This one's from our very own Maureen, or Mo, as we all know. Hey, folks, just wanted to grab your ears for a second to let you know all about the upcoming open mic night over at Mo's Diner this Sunday. That's right. Claim your 15 minutes of fame. Enjoy some well performances and the usual good food and drinks for everyone. I expect to see all of y'all for a great evening and maybe even some dancing. You know who you are. Come join the show at home at 8 p.m. this Sunday. I'll come get you if you don't. Well, you heard her, folks. And I'll be there, too, so you better not miss it. Back to the music and to one of my favorite songs. Mail Carrier Meredith. Farmer DJ Jack. Seen any ghost drivers on the way here? Ghost drivers? Yeah, you know, people driving on the wrong side of the road. Nope, haven't seen them. Okay, I was just wondering. Don't bother. I need to get back to the live show. See you tomorrow, I reckon. Bye now. I reckon. Oh, and please close the door. Don't want to broadcast any mail truck noise. Thank you much. I'm busy. Okay, good luck. No! Damn it! I almost had it! I almost fucking had it! Thanks for breaking my concentration! You're welcome. <sighs> Video games are supposed to be fun. I feel horrible. Absolutely horrible. 
Maybe you should try a different hobby. You know what? I can beat this damn game, and I'm not quitting until I have. Good luck with that. And so ends a week full of turmoil. You can say that again. Only the Angels have lost to the White Sox. That would have made it perfect. Never underestimate White Sox. They're playing each other again tonight. Did they change the bet? Nope. Hold the line. Okay, let's see what happens. Maybe you're my lucky charm. Have a great weekend, Meredith. Oh, wait. This was your last day. I totally forgot to tell you. They still have to find someone else for the job. So, I guess you can have it if you want. Wow. That sounds quite nice, actually. Of course. And it's a great job. You know what? Think about it. Let me know Monday morning when you return your stuff. Get a run now. Red Sox are playing the Yankees. Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's your dad again. How was your time in the mail delivery business? Oh, hi, Dad. Well, don't take this personally, but I'm glad it's almost over. <laughs> no apologies necessary, Meredith. I'm glad you gave it a try. Yep. And at least now I can finally put faces to your mailman war stories. <laughs> I was hoping I could listen to one of those for once. Oh, hold on, Meredith. Let me guess. Mom wants to talk to me? Hi, Meredith. Sorry to butt in, but I was wondering, are you planning on going back to the city? Hi, Mom. Well, yeah. Steve gave me an offer that's almost impossible to refuse. Partner in the company. Wow, that's... Great! Although I'm a little worried that you might put work first and everything else second. Don't worry about it, Mom. I'll be all right. Opportunities like these don't come around often. So that's work. Any news about interesting people, perhaps? You know, the interesting, interesting ones? Well, I did meet someone interesting, but I'm not sure it will turn into something serious. Oh, that's a pity. But I guess that would have been pretty complicated anyway. When you're back to your busy life? Complicated? Yes. Impossible? Not sure. Maybe I'm being too rational about it. I don't want to sound cheesy, but it's true what they say. Love conquers all. Yep. Hold on. Is this the part where Dad takes over? Hey, Em. I just wanted to say, don't get on the plane right away when they announce that boarding has started. I mean, why hurry to get in that cramped airplane seat? Thanks, Dad. I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. It's just something that popped in my mind. Uh, have a good flight, Em. Let us know when you've landed. Oh, we're running out of coins again. Gotta go. Take care, Em. Okay. Bye. I hope you don't think I'm a cheapskate for having dinner here. There aren't a lot of other restaurants around, and I'm pretty sure their food isn't better than Moe's. Don't worry about it, Robert. I love it here. Thanks, Meredith. You're such a kind person. Good evening, you two beautiful people. Ready to order? Ladies first. Hi, Maureen. I'll have a salad, please. Excellent choice, Meredith. And what would you like to wash it down with? Hmm. I think I'll have a glass of wine. Gotcha. Robert? The usual for me, Maureen. All right, Robert. T-bone steak and a beer. Doesn't get any more lumberjack than that. Be right back, folks. Ashley, start cutting up the coleslaw and get the steaks out. Maureen's the best. Did you hear about the open mic night she's organizing? Yeah, she only told me about it a dozen times. I wish I could go, especially since I heard that Jack's gonna do a thing. Jack? What's he gonna do? Give a lecture about potatoes? Believe it or not, he's a very good ballet dancer. Jack? Really? <laughs> no, he's into comedy. Would have loved to heckled him. Oh well. This is a good week, anyhow. Must be nice that the apartments are off your mind for a while. Alrighty, here are your beverages, folks. I'm afraid the food might take a little longer, as a certain kitchen helper thought the freezer was a good place for storing steaks. Oh, I really should get one of those microwave ovens to defrost them. You seem a little stressed. Is it the upcoming open mic? Why should I be stressed about that? It's going to be lovely. And you better be there, Robert Harris. Maureen, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I won't be able to make it. 
I did not just hear you say that, young man. Oh, by the way, Meredith, I need to steal him for two minutes. He needs to check on some wiring for me. Excuse me, Meredith. This is Maureen's jurisdiction. You have to obey the law. Mmm, that tasted so good. Thanks, Maureen, for the fantastic blueberry pie. You're welcome. It's my way of making up for stealing you away from Meredith. Ooh, I swear. She can give quite the stink eye if she wants, can't you, hon? Oh boy, the world would be boring without her. Speaking of, are you gonna miss your daily delivery round? It depends on who's on the round. Oh, anyone in particular you don't like? It's not right to gossip, but Nancy Carlyle drains all the life energy out of me. I hear what you're saying. I also don't stick around for small talk at the store. Oh well, small towns, can't like everyone. You can't avoid them either. Have you always lived in a small town? Yeah, Providence Oaks is my second one. After my divorce, I had to move away from the first one. Everything and everyone reminded me of her. I can imagine that. But maybe I shouldn't bother you with the innermost feelings of a lumberjack. Wouldn't be a bother at all. Robert and Meredith, sorry to break up your conversation, but we're closing up early tonight. Gotta set up some stuff for the open mic night, and I can't use any peeping eyes. Oh, okay, Maureen. No problem. Let me get the check for you, so I can leave you two to your lovely evening. Can you put it on my tab, Maureen? Anything for you, darling. Do you mind if I pay? Or at least for half of it? Meredith, after all your help, this is the least I can do. So, yes, I mind. Now let's get going before Maureen gets her broom out. Meredith, thanks again for your help. I'm not sure what would have happened if you hadn't come here for your mail delivery vacation. You're welcome, Robert. I was happy to help you out. A little help goes a long way. Hope to see you around again. You too, Robert. Take care. But you're not leaving without a hug. Anyway, I love this town. You know I do. So, I'm dedicating my last jokes to specific people here tonight. The first one's for Maureen. A guy walks into a bar, and dozens of slabs of meat are hanging from the ceiling. So he asks the bartender, what's up with the hanging meat up there, man? So the bartender says, ah, you're new here. Well, we like to play a game here. If you can jump up and slap a steak, the house will pay for your drinks all night. However, if you miss, you have to pay everyone else's bar tab. So, want to give it a go? Nah, says the man. <laughs> Those stakes are too high. <laughs> this one's for our own newcomer, Meredith Weiss. So, a woman's driving down the freeway, but all of a sudden, she hears a local news bulletin warning drivers on the very freeway she's on. They're saying, please be advised of this very dangerous situation of a car going the wrong way. So the woman says to herself, What car? <laughs> Why, there's dozens! <laughs> well, folks, wasn't that special? Now, let me know if any of you have any jokes about Jack, you hear? It's an open mic, after all. <laughs> it's actually time for a little break right now. So come on up to the bar for some of our finest concessions. We'll continue shortly. Mildred, how are you? And how are the cats? Fine, on both counts, dear. Thank you for asking. So, do you like the hair? Love it. That hairdresser did a great job. Thank you, dear. Pity it's quite the waste of time and money, seeing as how I can't stay for long. Really? What's the rush? You see, my son decided to drop by, unannounced. 
and he's staying the whole weekend. Oh, that's wonderful news. Mm-hmm. All right, well, anyway, take care, dear. Now, where did he park the car? Yes, it's me, Matt Kearney, in an egg brace. Real funny, huh? Oh, hi, Matt. What happened? Well, I was about to send the final boss to the afterlife, but then the computer crashed. I kicked my foot out in anger and fell from my chair, and now I'm here looking like a loser. I'm sure you'll beat the game one day. Don't give up on the dream. I can't play like this, but I'm going to work out a strategy in the meantime. Guess who? Jack Burton? <laughs> Aw, now I'm going to be a disappointment. It's just me. Aw, that's a real bummer. So, what have I missed? Eh, not much. Jack just did some comedy. But the final act is supposed to be the real showstopper. At least, that's what Maureen tells me. Really? Well then, I guess I arrived just in time. So, how have you been? Busy packing, I guess. Super busy. Again, I'm sorry I didn't have more time to... Hey, Meredith. Hey, Angie. Sorry to pop in like this, but I just wanted to inform you I fixed everything on the RV. She's got a new radio, I replaced some wiring, adjusted windshield wiper speed. The sea turtle is ready to go! <laughs> That's great, Lori. Thanks. I'm sure she's just like new. Well, I wouldn't say that, but you'll see. Gotta go later. An RV? You never told me you had an RV. Well, it's kind of a recent development. You know Mickey and June? The hippie couple? Sure do. They told me it was mine if I wanted it. And I did. Then Lori gave it a checkup. And now I am the proud owner of the sea turtle. Wow, good for you. I'd love a free RV. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Cool. So, where are you going to take it? Wherever the open road takes me. Sounds good to me. A free spirit, the way Mickey and June intended. Can I come? <laughs> hmm, I have grown quite fond of you, you know. Likewise, Miss Weiss. But at some point, you've got to give me a definite answer. You get that, right? Look alive, folks. It's time for the final act. It's a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> Saved by the bell, babe. I got stuff to do anyway. Angie, wait! Dear people, none other than our own Kay Evans will perform next. She has been writing songs since she was a little girl. And I cannot say how thrilled I am to host her first performance of hopefully many to come. I am so Proud of you, honey. Please put your hands together for Kay, everyone. This does not happen a lot, but you have left me speechless. That was K, people. Another round of applause. Well, it's a good thing I didn't leave when Reynolds started his nonsense. This kid can sing. Oh, hi, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, it's good to see someone flourish, but I'd rather be home right now. I don't blame you. Smoking a pipe and reading a proper book is the only acceptable way to spend a Sunday evening in September. Bert, thank you so much for coming. I know you'd rather be somewhere else right now. 
That's okay, kid. I don't regret it one bit. You did great. But ladies, if you'll excuse me, I'm out of here. Good night, Bert. Thanks again. And now for an announcement. I'm serious, so hush now. Now, you all know that Kay has been working here at the diner for quite a while now. In fact, she was my anchor after Stan left us. And I think the time has come to formally announce right here that I will put your name above the door of this place, honey, where it belongs. Kay's place. Mo Kay's. We haven't settled on a name yet, but there you go. Another round of applause. And have some drinks with us. That was amazing. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Em. It felt amazing. I was so super nervous, you know? Like, shaking and all that. I'm so glad it went well. Kay's place, huh? Congratulations. That was quite a surprise. Yeah, I told you. Mo asked me, like, a gazillion times, right? Kind of felt right this time. We haven't hashed out any details, as you might have noticed. <laughs> but it feels good, you know? How did it feel to be up there? Oh, it was so great to be performing again. It felt amazing. I'm all over the place right now. It was such a rush. I will definitely be doing that again. If they let me, of course. That's great. I am so proud of you, Kay. You really have made a great life here. Thanks, Em. I'd like to think so. Big day tomorrow, right? You know what you're going to do? Honestly? Well... Wait, I'm not good at this stuff, so... I just want to say... It was good to have you back these past weeks, Em. Really good. You just do what you feel you have to do. I'm just glad we reconnected. Promise we'll keep in touch? Whatever the outcome, yeah? Of course! And remember... Time marches, marches on. on. <laughs> See you, Kay. Thanks. For everything. My lovely people, the time has come for the open mic part of the evening to end. Ashley was going to do a ventriloquist bit next. But I just heard he hurt his hand back in his cabin. Let me thank you again for joining us. And there's plenty of food and drink to go around. I sure do hope they're keeping things proper in there while I'm taking a breather. So, you had fun? I loved it. Jack was great. Good, good. Honestly, when Jack started telling those jokes, oh, I didn't know whether to suck him one or laugh out loud, you know? Oh, that man is something, all right. And what about Kay, huh? Oh, she was amazing. You said it. Oh, that girl is so talented. Oh, I'd give my big toe to be able to do what she does behind a keyboard. Oh, sheesh. I'm still thinking about your news about handing over the diner or Kay's place, huh? That was quite the bombshell. That's my style. I've mentioned it to Kay, yes, many times since Stan died. She probably thought I was joking half the time, honestly. I just want to give her the option. It's hers whenever she wants it. And if she doesn't, that's fine too. Seems like a bold choice to announce it to the town like that, though. Ha! You know me, hon. At least all the options are out in the open now, right? So what's next for you, now that you're handing over the reins? Well, to be honest, I'll probably stick around the diner for now, help out. And maybe I'll try my hand at something different on the side, you know? Maybe fix up some of those cabins in the woods. Rent them out. Never too old to find something new to do. That sounds like a great idea. Doesn't it just? How did things end up with Kay? You could tell me to mind my own, of course. It's just that that girl is like a daughter to me. We talked, yeah. We really reconnected. And I'm happy we did. <laughs> Listen, you're two grown women. And if that's the choice you two ended up on, I can only respect that. Speaking of choices, you've got a big day in the morning, don't you? Know what you're gonna do yet? Stick around? Move back? Honestly, no. No clue at all. Sounds like you're feeling a lot of pressure. I guess I am. <sighs> you know what I've found? Screw clarity. You don't need clarity to make choices. That's a bit direct. 
I swear. People these days seem to think that because they can calculate and approximate, they can clear up the secret to existence. Like, life's a game you can win or lose. Pretending you know exactly where future you wants to end up. And plotting that out for the rest of your life? <sighs> I'd almost say that's arrogant. Not to mention boring. The beauty is in not knowing, if you ask me. But how do you live your life then? Want to know my advice? You take that one first step and see where it leads you. You can never truly predict the one that comes after. And whatever path you take will come with its ups and downs. There will always be joy. And there will always be regret. But that's something to be thankful for. That's what makes life yours, doesn't it? Thanks, Maureen. That makes sense. You'll be all right, huh? You just keep checking what feels right. And if not, just take that first step, you hear? Maureen, thanks for everything. I best get back inside. You take care now, Meredith Wise. Take care, Maureen. Good morning, Meredith. You won't believe the weekend I had. Saturday, I placed a bet on the Angels, just like you said, and won. But they played again yesterday, and I let it ride, and then they lost. They're playing again tonight, and now I don't know what to do anymore. Well, Frank, the pattern is obvious. You're a gambling addict beyond salvation. Ha <laughs> ha, Meredith. I guess you're right, and I guess I don't mind. Speaking of gambling, I bet you're taking the job. And that's not just because you're wearing your coat. I love the coat, Frank. But no, I'm taking it off. I'm leaving Providence Oaks again. Ah, oh, that's not what I was hoping to hear, Meredith. But I understand. What are you going to do? Back to my home, my job, and my life in the big city. So I guess you're going back to the future, eh? Computers, living in the fast lane. Can't say that I envy you. Although it must be nice to live close to a major ballpark. Do you need a ride to the airport? Yes, please. But only if we can talk about something other than baseball. All right, go grab your stuff and let's go. So, if you're leaving, what's going to happen to the sea turtle? I don't know. Do you have any ideas? You could leave it in storage here or put it up for sale. Give it to someone else who will use it. Are you hinting at something, Lori? Well, you can store it at our place if you want. We have enough space. Or I might use it to hide from my parents every once in a while. That'd be great, Lori. That way, I know that the sea turtle will be in the best place it could be while I'm gone. For sure. And you won't mind if I use it sometimes, right? Maybe I'll tinker on it a little? Nah. Go ahead and have fun. Though, I would appreciate it if you told me of any big changes. All right. This is going to be fun! Hey, Meredith? I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too, Lori. It was really fun watching that movie and working on the RV with you. Me too. Besides, you'll be back sometime, right? Of course! I have to check on my favorite engineer. You mean me? Ha! I'd love that. Safe travels, Meredith. Thank you, Lori. See you around. Wagons West. So, here we are again, heading the other way. Aren't you going to miss it here? Probably. It feels odd to be leaving again. I wouldn't want to leave this place, not for a million bucks. Well, wait, no, two million bucks should be enough. Do you believe money can buy happiness? That's a good question. Give me a big pile of cash right now and I'll feel real happy. And I'm sure it'll last a couple of days, but then it'll probably start to wear off, and I'll be back to complaining about the weather before you know it. But it's probably nicer to complain about the weather when you're living in a big old mansion. Hey, what's this honking clown up to? Move out of the way, you lunatic! Wait a minute. That's Robert Harris. Yeah, yeah, I'm pulling over. Sorry about that, Frank. Hope it didn't scare you. That's okay, Robert. I'm a road rage veteran, but, uh, what's all this about? It's not about you, Frank. I need to talk to Meredith. Oh, uh, okay. I'll go have a smoke. Hey, Meredith. 
This is going to sound super awkward and hopeless and desperate and probably a lot more things, but I don't want you to leave. I've decided a while ago that I'm done with stuff like this, but I guess it's not something you can decide. Robert, that's so sweet of you, but I've made up my mind about this. I'm leaving PL. Yeah, okay, yeah. I sort of kind of figured you'd say that. Sorry, Robert. I know this will sound like crap, but I'm sure you'll find someone else. Thanks, Meredith. Well, I better get back to work again. Take care. You too, Robert. Okay, Meredith. Let's get you to the airport. I've got a double shift today, and the mail doesn't deliver itself. Sorry for butting in, folks, but I've got a special treat for y'all. I just updated my playlist. This new song is from our very own KF. Let's see what today's weather will be like. P.O. people, good morning! Today's weather will be nothing short of gorgeous, and I can't wait to go outside and head out to the acres. But not before sharing, you know what? P.O. positive or pet peeves? I don't need callers for today's P.O. positive. I'm picking it myself. <laughs> I'm talking about Moe's open mic last night. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did. And I'm sorry if I offended anyone with my jokes. Well, no. Actually, I am not sorry. Not sorry at all. Thank you much, Mo and Kay, for hosting it. It's just one of the things that makes Providence Oaks the best place in the world. Have a great day. Uh, <laughs> you tell him, Jack. What's this guy up to? Wait, is that Robert? Y yeah, yeah, Robert. I'll pull over. Hey, Meredith, sorry about that. I hope it didn't scare you. Hey, Robert. What's going on? Well, this is going to sound super awkward and hopeless and desperate and probably a lot more things, but I don't want you to leave. I've decided a while ago that I'm done with stuff like this, but I guess it's not something you can decide. Robert, that's so sweet of you, but I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I figured you'd say that. I... Wait, what? You're not going? Yep. It's nice here. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, great. Well, I might as well blurt it all out. I like you. A lot. I didn't want to give in to it. I've been through a rough breakup once, and I didn't want to risk ever feeling like that again. So, what do you propose? That I just get in your car right now? Uh, I wasn't going to propose, but... Yeah, Meredith. I'd love that. Okay. Coffee at Moe's? And a piece of pie. Sorry for butting in, folks, but I've got a special treat for y'all. I just updated my playlist. This new song is from our very own Kay Evans. Here she is, the sea turtle in all of her glory. Do you like her? I love her, Lori. She's amazing. Yay! Hey, Meredith, I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too, Lori. It was really fun watching that movie and working on the RV with you. <laughs> Me too. Besides, you'll be back sometime, right? Of course. I have to check on my favorite engineer. You mean me? Ha! I'd love that. Safe travels, Meredith. Thank you, Lori. See you around. Guess who? Is it the person who makes the same annoying joke twice in a row? It's me, Angie Eastman. You know, I thought it'd be easier to guess the second time around. So, this is the RV, huh? Yeah. She may not look like much, but she'll get the job done. 
It's perfect. So where are we going first? <laughs> yeah, about that. Hmm? I would really, seriously, definitely like you to go with me. Wow, you've got me speechless. Again. <laughs> Don't be too flattered. It's just, there's a dodgy TV in there with a VCR attached, and I need someone to feed it a steady diet of movies. <laughs> I'm your gal. So, you probably have to go pack, right? Well... There it is. It's not much. Just some clothes, some toiletries and trinkets, and seven shoeboxes filled with videotapes. So, yeah, I'm all packed. Wait, you knew I'd ask you to come with me? Well, I had a hunch. Plus, I was prepping to leave P.O. anyway, right? So I just stepped things up a bit. Anyway, give me the keys. I've heard about your driving. What have you heard? From who? People talk. When advertising exec David Howard, parentheses Albert Brooks, is passed over for a promotion and subsequently fired, he decides to change his whole life. He convinces his wife Linda, parentheses Monica Johnson, to sell their house and roam the country easy rider style in a Winnebago. Okay, forget this one. That's just not going to be relatable at all. <laughs> nope. We've got nothing in common with those guys. I have another flick where a bunch of academics set up a ghost hunting business in an old fire station. That should be way more accessible. Angie Eastman, have you seen every single tape in here? Not all of them, but most. Come on! But I don't mind watching them again. In fact, I'd love to see them with someone who... Knows nothing about movies? I was going to put it a little nicer than that. Someone who has unspoilt virgin eyes. Virgin eyes? What are you, a poet now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Lost in America will unspool before these virgin eyes soon enough. Tell me about Stand By Me. It's about four kids from Oregon, right? Sorry for butting in, folks, but I've got a special treat for y'all. I just updated my playlist. This new song is from our very own KF. <laughs> 